The world needs more lithium. Can technology ramp up production quickly? I'm with Energy X, which is developing its own direct lithium extraction technology. The CEO and chair is Teague Egan. Teague, welcome to Kitco. Thanks for having me, Michael. Let's step back. Can you describe the current state of tech used for lithium production? Production is mostly from Solars and hard rock. Yeah, I mean, all lithium today is found in two major resources. Uh, Solars, which is brine, basically like really salty water that has lithium dissolved in the water alongside other salts. And then hard rock, which is more your typical open pit mining that you would think of, like uh, mining for copper or uh, different ores. A third is actually clay uh, that has not been commercialized yet, but those are generally the main resources of lithium that are found today. Can you expand on direct lithium extraction? So when you're trying to extract lithium from brine, uh, you basically are pumping up subsurface liquids. Uh, they're really near the surface. Uh, these are prehistoric dried up salt lakes for the most part. Uh, and they're in really arid regions, uh, really high deserts um, in mountain ranges, such as the Andean mountain range. Uh, the surrounding communities don't have that much water to start with. So when you're bringing up all this water and it's evaporating, uh, you're losing even more water, uh, in addition to fresh water that you need for processing uh, the lithium. So water is a big problem in these areas. And if you need a lot of water to do your processing mechanisms, that's almost a non-starter for these areas. Is Energy X scaling up? We're really at a crunch point right now in regards to delivering lithium. Yeah, so I mean, this is this is definitely a hot industry. Uh, and but it's it's rather new. You know, you mentioned Vulcan. Uh, they're a, they're a relatively new company that was formed, I think, a few years ago. Uh, same with E3, and and the reason for that is because we have never needed lithium until now. There, there's never been a big, broad. I mean, there's there's applications in some pharmaceuticals and, and medication, application in glass, but that was you know in the tens of thousands of tons per year. Uh, an entire global demand. Then consumer electronics came uh, and you needed a little bit more like things such as phones and, and laptops, uh, rechargeable batteries. Um, but then all of a sudden electric vehicles became a thing. Uh, and that really happened in the 2010s. Uh, and maybe even you could say the mid, you know, 2015, 2018, somewhere around there. And you started to see this exponential curve and it takes about 10,000 iPhone batteries to make one electric vehicle battery. So all of a sudden, the demand was just absolutely astronomical, like literally overnight. Uh, so all these smart people started working on, OK, how do we solve this supply chain issue? How do we produce more lithium from the conventional, what we discussed, evaporation ponds that have really low recovery rates, really long lead times, really big environmental footprints to improving that production method with something like DLE, a direct lithium extraction technology. So for us, uh, as we think about commercialization, there's really, there's really two uh, ways to go to market in this field, right? One is just a pure direct lithium extraction. So take it right from the wellhead, you're pumping up brine from subsurface and you're processing that lithium, right? Now, most would think that that's probably the best way to do it. However, today you have a number of lithium producers that are producing lithium today that have existing infrastructure, evaporation ponds. They've spent billions of dollars on that infrastructure. And they don't necessarily want to see something come in and replace, you know, what they've already built, right? Rendering their existing conventional technology or production methods useless. So what we said, we were basically faced with a decision. We had, we could go in two ways. One, we could go do it all by ourselves, find a resource, and not only become a technology producer, but also essentially a miner, right? Or we could create our technology to be complementary to the existing infrastructure and plug into these evaporation ponds 
taking the, 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 the good parts of them, but teaming it up with our technology to increase the recovery rate of lithium from 30 all the way up to 90%, uh, decrease the, the lead times by an average today, it's an average of 18 months down to like 10 to 12 months. So you're taking 30 to 40% off of uh, the lead time that it takes to produce the lithium and drastically decrease uh, the size of the ponds, taking away maybe 30% of, uh, of the land square footage of the ponds. So that's our go to market. And for us, we are looking to work with some of the biggest existing producers, as opposed to the E3s that have their own resource and are trying to, you know, raise money for mining, drill wells, etc or the vulcans that are doing a similar thing with geothermal brines we just want to plug into the existing producers uh some of the big ones like albemarle or sqm or allchem uh livent and really bolster their production uh from the levels that they are to maybe two three hundred percent more output or yield from the same existing uh production sites now, the precious metal sector is finding it difficult to raise money in these markets. How is it for energy transition and the resource space? Yeah, so I think that there was a point where raising money was pretty hard for battery metals companies. Um, just like any other market, there's ebbs and flows, right? We uh, uh, back in, and, and I think that lithium specifically and battery materials is really uh, exaggerated on that. Uh, back in 2017, the price of lithium was mm, $12,000 a ton. And then we saw it go up to $18,000 a ton and everybody was ecstatic. Right. And, uh, you know, it was a huge market boom and there was a lot of investment into lithium. And then really quickly, only about a year to two years, it dropped from 18,000 down to 8,000. You know, you're looking at over a 50% decline in the price of this kind of it's lithium is transitioning from a specialty chemical into a commodity, uh, but it was at a, it was at a low and uh, there was there was really not a lot of investment going into it. Uh, and lithium is one of these things, along with other battery materials. I mean, building a mine generally is a really long cycle. It's not you know, put money in today and you're going to have lithium tomorrow. These are 10 year cycles in order to build out mining infrastructure to produce these battery metals. Um, so you saw, you saw a drought of investment in the 2018, 2019, kind of 2020 span. And then boom, all of a sudden 2021, now 2022, it's gone up from 8,000 all the way up to $80,000 a ton. I mean, that's, I mean, that's like tech software type of type of numbers, right? So now I think we're at around $60,000 a ton and yeah, it could come down. Uh, but, but the, the projections on electric vehicles are going nowhere. Companies like GM, Ford, all the big auto OEMs, Tesla are investing heavily into their supply chains to be able to secure these battery materials. Uh, so, so for me, you know, even now that we're kind of maybe entering into a recession, uh, I think that that is natural. You know, we've seen a really great run over the past six years in the stock market. Like it has to come down to some degree, but lithium and battery materials, I really personally have not seen that recession. There is still tremendous investor interest uh, into developing these resources and developing technologies to help the supply chain more efficiently procure battery materials uh, to be able to produce cells and eventually electric vehicles. Teague, thanks for speaking with Keiko. Thanks so much, Michael. Teague is CEO of EnergyX. My name is Michael McRae and you're watching Keiko Mining. <laughs>